All right, let's take a moment to have a look in here. So I've got a little bit apart, not not hugely. We'll talk about the lower control arm, actually. We'll start with that. Oh, actually, subframe, start there. So you can see you've got your attachment point here, which is where the cradle lockout's fitted, which is basically just a series... Oh, God damn it. Just a series of bushes, or oh, lockouts, actually, that lock out the original factory bushes. You've got them there, and if I come around here... and up. I'm trying to do this, I can't see the bloody camera. Um, in here, it's fucking hell. This is so hard. Anyway, so without without pinning that together, your subframe can move every which way, front, back, side to side, bloody up, down, you name it. So the lockout is obviously pinning the subframe to the car. Now, whether you get any increase in MVH, I think. I can't really comment. I, I don't believe so. Maybe a clunk every now and then, possibly. Um, not a my car, but I have heard of it. So, there's that. Now, I thought that while we're at this point, you can see the camber arm there. Now, these are the Steeder ones. Steeder fully adjustable bastards. Turnbuckle. Uh, on the subframe end, they're bushed with a Delrin bush. And at this end, obviously, got the rose joint, palm joint, spherical, I don't care what you call it, same, same. Now that's obviously, you know, going to have some, I, I mainly bought them for the adjustability factor. I can easily dial in whatever camber I want. I don't need to reach up into shit spots and do it. So there was that, but also the fact that they're, you know, rigid is pretty handy. Now, coming back from all that, I pulled the toe, uh, sorry, the vertical link out already, which would traditionally, I'm just trying to get this camera to, so I can see what the hell I'm looking at, would normally go between here and here. So you can see that gap's obviously reduced. Now, what does the vertical link do? Let's stick it back here. Try and find the spot. That. That's the movement. Right there. It's precisely what that vertical link stops. So you're accelerating, the wheels are trying to go forward in the car, you know, the whole, the whole thing's trying to go that way, what do you think's happening? Your lower control arm's trying to bloody travel that way, and your vertical link is doing a bit of this shit. So there's that. So lower control arm, let's talk about it. So from the factory, they provide you with a um, spherical bearing at the rear, up in there, that is a spherical bearing from the factory. For noise, vibration and harshness, they elected to put a rubber piece of shit in the front here. That's the one that causes you all the grief. That's the one that flops around and carries on like a mule. So, let's talk about that a bit. Look at the... If I'm out here, dead, drawn straight, I don't know if you can see it, but the whole thing's angled, I'm going to try and use my hands, angled that way, rearward. The other one is angled, where is it, more or less straight, straight in and out. So what you can see from the get-go is that this camera, that this bush here, actually needs, as it comes up and down, has to change its axis. Well, its axis remains the same, but the, the bush needs to be able to pivot, all right? So when you've got your rubber factory shit one in there, it actually binds a bit throughout that, that motion. So what I found, as soon as I changed out that rubber bush, put in the spherical, the whole rear suspension actually freed up a bit and was actually able to move up and down quite easily, uh, which made the whole thing a little bit jiggly because uh, you know, factory shocks are just a little bit under damped and they certainly couldn't cope with that. This might actually be useful. So I've deliberately reconnected the camber arm. The vertical link and toe link are still disconnected. Let's put the toe somewhere around where it should be. Okay, now you're looking straight down on that disc, more or less. Let's change the toe. Look what happened to the camber, it went negative, it went positive. Mm, have a think about that. This is all part of what's happening when she's doing some fucked up shit. You're getting toe changes and camper changes and a whole heap of other stuff. Let's do that again. We'll call that neutral. We'll go toe out. 
towing. It's actually changing the camber angle. So you can't actually, when you adjust your camber, you actually need to compensate to a small extent with your tow. As in, if you change the camber, not well, the tow will shift obviously, but if you change your tow, you will shift your camber as well. They, they're not completely separated. 